Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Clue the motherfucking down with another episode of Country Family Podcast. And I appreciate y'all being patient. We got on here, we made it work. We ain't even gonna talk about that. But as y'all see, we got my boy Focus and J Mac in the building. What's going on, y'all? What's going on, y'all? What's up, man? So the first question that I usually ask everybody that comes on to the show. So for both of y'all, what was the first song that y'all listened to when y'all woke up this morning? Ooh, wait. Oh, I got I can answer that question. Uh, uh, I listened to uh, All My Plants Are Dead by Natalie Carr, produced by me, because that song came out at midnight. So that's exactly what I listened to. My, uh, my, okay. <laughs> yeah, you got to plug that in again. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I had something cool like that to say. I, li- I listened to um, Masego and Devin Morrison's Can I Get to the Yams. Hey, both of them. Can man. I get to the Yams? Sweet. Yeah. It's kind of running it all back to give everybody a um, understanding of who y'all are. Um, like I said, I know y'all like you know a rapper producer duo, but I want y'all to give like you know a quick introduction of who y'all are and um, and what y'all do essentially. True. Um, I go first, Matt. Um, so I was at Central. Um, I got to Central like 2002. I probably didn't meet Matt until 2008. Really, um, uh, Ninth had a class. A hip hop class with uh with play from Kid and Play and him and him used to teach the uh the hip hop class and after the class Ninth would be like yo let's go to the studio that you know we had a studio up there so Ninth, uh Matt was one of the producers that I met when I was up there and I was like this guy got some soul the beats are amazing um so he came to a couple sessions and from there we've been rocking with each other ever since and when you said Ninth I know I know who you're talking about but definitely oh, definitely yeah, uh, expand on who you're talking about Yeah Ninth Wonder uh th- that was a producer from Little Brother um uh, you know legendary legend legendary producer I mean from the same from the same vein as Q-Tip uh Mad Lib Jay Dilla you know what I'm saying um the 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 group Little Brother their name really means they're the little brothers of of Q-Tip and Native Tongues if you know Native Tongues the whole little you Man. know all of that, you know, they're they're from they're the little brothers of those guys. So, you know, they right. kept it they kept it going. But yeah, so um, yeah, can you tell me about this track enough and um and pretty much what's going on with that? Yeah, so enough, man. We had actually that track, man. I, that track record's probably about a a year a year old, man. We um we worked on that. It was for the uh, Bob's Our Eternal Two, um, which is coming out hopefully this this quarter at least. Um, but Mac gave me the track, um, him and another guy named um, S-Class, I think King S-Class out of VA, him and Mac collaborated on that record. When I got it, I was like, I'm probably listening to that beat by itself at least at least two months, just riding around in the car. It's wild. Yeah. It, it made me want to drive too. That's exactly why no, I put it, it in the video. You want to yeah. ride out, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I was that's what I was doing. And um and once I once I got the words, I was just like, Oh, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a record. I didn't I ain't gonna front. I didn't initially think that was going to be a single. Um, and then Mac was just like, nah, that's a single. Shoot a video for that. And that's how it happened. Me, no. Um, I was actually born in New York. Um, then I moved to D.C. I lived in Maryland. And I ended up in North Carolina where I was mostly raised. That's how I got to Central. Gotcha. Um, and that's how I met, you know, like everybody that I know. Initially, um, coming from a small town, Elizabeth City, North Carolina, I wanted to go to, uh, to New York. And, you know, just actually out because my dad was up there. So I was just like, let me just live up there, see mm-hmm. what I can make shape. My grandma was like, nah, go ahead and go to Central. And I went to Central. But luckily, I was able to meet Ninth and, and, a, and a whole yeah. host of other people, you know. So how was it being in that area around, like, the people that, I mean, because, you know, there was that 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 time frame. Where I, I want to say it was, like, 2005 through, I'll say, 2013, 14, where, like, I mean, the underground, especially Little Brother, and as far as, you know, say just around that, everybody was paying them homage. Everybody, everybody. So how did it feel being surrounded by all those people trying to kind of get your own, you know, you trying to make your own wave? Man, it, it was amazing. I mean, just on, on campus, I mean, not to toot my own horn, but I was the god on campus. I was knocking door to door dorms, like play my joint, play my joint. You know what I'm saying? So I was going crazy already with it. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so... It, it was crazy. And then they have nice support. Um, and then uh, Big Doe, who was the head of the Hall of Justice, to have their support was mm-hmm. really big for me. Um, so that, that boosted my confidence. Ninth would do little cool things in the studio. Like he might make one beat and be like, all right, 
it's 10 rappers in here. Whoever got the best verse, get to jump on it. I was on that joint every time. That's wild. So <laughs> that's that's wild. And like call it B-ball tries. I think you can look it up online. It's me, Rhapsody, uh, maybe like six other MCs, Swift. All of us was on the same track. Okay, yeah. Sh- shout out to Rhapsody. Shout out to Jam Yeah, yeah shout man. out Rap. Cause yeah, that's that's a whole wave. I was literally, just, I think I had just made mention to her uh, in my last interview because my homie was talking about his daughter was you know was getting ready to write and shit. I was like, we need more Rhapsodies out there because it that was woman cool hearing her on your intro. It, yeah, I didn't even think about the connection. I really wasn't even making the connection. That was just you know an intro video, and I I saw that song and I was like, I need to get the license so I can put that on my joint because yeah, yeah, man. Because yeah, Rhapsody is is the truth, man. Throughout the process, I think we still have issues here in J Mac. I think, nah, still not, bro. Hey man, I appreciate you keep trying to come back though. Like that's like I, I really appreciate the dedication, <laughs> yeah. man. Yeah, I was saying. So on the last project that y'all did, y'all y'all say you're working on two guys or Eternal Two, but on the one that's out right now, what would you say yeah. was your uh, one of your most favorite projects? No, I got you. Um, I did a record uh, on there. I- I mean, I'm, I'm gonna talk about it now, but it's a guy with, with sequence and Swift. It's using a brandy, uh, a brandy sample. Um, I forgot the name of the brandy sample, but it's a famous one. Everybody knows it. And me and my boy Swift did this. It's, it's about a breakup. It's like breaking up with a girl, and it's just like perfect because you know I don't even know the title of the song yet, but when everybody hears it, it's gonna be everybody's favorite. Because I just felt like listening to Devin Morrison as much as I do, and he's yeah. always talking about the hard things to talk about in a relationship. I think one of the things for guys, it's hard for us to break up with a girl when we kind of done with her. We just kind of like ghost her or we don't or we don't say anything or we get caught that's cheating facts. and be like, all right, you know, that's cool. This she gone. We ain't want to be with her anyway. So this song kind of like explained about how hard that is, but gave niggas a, a, a way to kind of just like, you know, put it in layman terms and, and, and grab your balls, man. Be a man. Tell us. We tell need, we need that shit. Is. Yeah, because we you don't know what shit, to say. Man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I like that. that. It's another one called Damascus that I did with my homeboy Larry Donovan. That joint's gonna be crazy. Okay, and those are gonna be on the next joint. Yep, this one coming up. All right, bet, bet. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me oh, now? Man, we, we got you, you now. We got oh, you now, man. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, look, who's that guy? Swiffer. What's up, Swiffer? Hey, they were just talking about you. Oh, what's good? Said, what's up? Yeah. Man, so we glad you got you in here, man. So yeah, just kind of catch Ooh. you up a little bit. Uh, so what were your some of your um? I mean, I'll just I'll just stick to this last project. Uh, what was some of your most favorite uh, ones to actually create? Like as far as uh, you know, saying producing. Cool. All right, I got a cool story. So my favorite one was uh, on my mind, for sure. Second favorite was actually one that I felt like didn't get quite as much love as it could have. Uh, it was the record um, featuring Shivana. Um, Focus, what's the name of the song? I'm drawing a blank. Oh, you talking about the one where he was talking about uh, he was come the, breakup, the breakup one? Come home. Yeah. There we go. Okay, come home. I was last Come home was one, one of my favorites. Yeah. So, so girl, I was just fucking the they... girls. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, That's the truth. So, so, so the so the crazy part about that song was that was uh me and um a guy in, from Russia. From Russia, uh, named ATL, <laughs> for name ATL Beat. Um, we did that track. He had sent me the idea and I expounded on it because it was kind of like it was just a little flat. So I tried to expound on it and then focused did his part. And then even before Shivana added her part, I was like, man, wouldn't that be cool if there was like a females just like rant at the end that just was saying like, you know, go to hell. Off. Like, yeah. Yeah. I literally I don't even remember how I got to it, but I found a Jerry Springer clip with this woman spit a freestyle about a man that won't shit on the stage and i literally chopped her thing up and made it like it sounded like she was featured on the song oh that's, that's a true fine. story i'm gonna i'm gonna do a making of one day i think of that because i literally think about that all the time and i'm like what where did, how did i even get to that hey, hey, hey mac you got it you got it you got to back up man we, we had a producer from russia <laughs> that's what i said i, I say, said, you kind of just said, skipped over that real quick <laughs> A producer, hey, a producer couple, by the way, it was a dude and a girl, and we they showed That's us right. mad love. Like he sent me yeah. beats, he sent me over hundreds of beats, even to this day. I mean, so you know, it's, what, it's, what, what, were, what were their names? Uh, ATL, well, he was ATL, ATL beats. beats. ATL and hers beats. Is, is Vicky FX. 
Yeah, it is Vicky FX. Vicky yep. FX, I believe. Yeah. Damn, that's yeah. what's up, man. Was that yeah. was that the first time that y'all did something that big on an international type of uh connect like that? Not for me, for me for sure. Um, so I had never really done I had this I I worked with a guy named from France called um Analog Beats before, but just the dude from Russia, I mean, he even bought some of our vinyls and you know gave, you know was, was taking pictures in front, picture of, in front of monuments. that crazy like monument yeah that was crazy mm -hmm. that was crazy we gotta, gotta get you a vinyl one. man we gotta send get me, you one yeah, send, me your, hey. send me your address i'll mail oh, you one sure. Hey, for sure, man. and we're gonna do the same. I'm gonna I'm send y'all some merch. Oh shit, I'm gonna send y'all some merch. Yeah, we definitely oh, yeah, gonna make right. that. We're gonna make that swap for real, man. Mm -hmm. If y'all had one opportunity to get a message out to everybody in the world, like literally, it could just go across their phone like a little notification that we've sworn down, we turned off, but the shits keep popping up. If if that can, if y'all get a, in um one of those messages out, what would it say? I can go first. I know exactly the first thing that came to my mind. Get off the internet and hug your family. No, no, for real. Like, I, I think um, I like that. a lot of the stress that people have nowadays, you know, back in the 90s, you know, you know, back in the 90s, we didn't have the Internet to this level that we had. It. If you wanted to see your friend, you had to go outside, knock on his motherfucking door. You know what I'm saying? You had to remember girls telephone numbers till you got home. Hey, baby, write it down on my hand. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. if a lot of the stress that we kind of give ourselves on the Internet, you're looking at so much, so much craziness in the world. And you forget about the people that's right there with you. I mean, I go to the restaurant all the time and see see couples out on a date, and both of them got their heads in their phones. They're not even communicating. I haven't talked you know to each saying? other. Yeah, you see families like this. Every person in the family, five, six people in the family, eating together. Everybody got their heads in their phone. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, put that shit down. Hug your loved ones. You know what yeah. I'm saying? A lot of a lot of problems in the world will be solved if we just live in the moment. You know, like that. I was I was about to say I would say something similar, but since he already took that, I'd say, um, you know, it, it's it's not that bit serious to be serious. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't know. One day I said that at work, and my uh, my boss. This was like ten years ago. I said that at work because my boss was like getting on everybody, and it was one of them things. Like you know, we, I used to work with youth programs in Raleigh, and. Um, and everybody was just getting like an earful about y'all did this wrong, y'all did that wrong, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, yeah, but we're still here with the youth. We're still here. We're present. Yeah. And we're we're you know no matter what little you know nuances we weren't following to the manager's direct orders, I still was like, you know what? It's 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 not that serious to be serious. You know, like you can make your point without being an asshole. Sure. Like That's everybody, nice. everybody likes to poke their chest out in this world, and everybody likes to feel like they're the man, they're the woman, you know, they're they're this, they're that. It, it's not you don't you don't have to do that. People will find you on your own. You can just be yourself. If everybody just be, it, it ends up being themselves. Totally different scenario for the walk of life around here. And to please plug in your Instagrams or whatever social media, uh, plug yourself yep. in so everybody can follow you. Yeah, follow me at at focus. That's P. H O C U Z focus. Yes, sir. Yep. And I'm everywhere. Uh same way. Uh at J Mac the producer. J M A C T H E P R O D U C E R. Uh that's actual spelling. No, it's not D A. People are always like, oh J Mac the producer, right? And I'm like, no. No, not the <laughs> No, it's it's the, it's no. the. I went to <laughs> NC State. Yeah, yeah. NC Damn State it. is where I went. Yeah. yeah. Now for sure, man. I really appreciate y'all. Thank you for everybody that tapped in. Everybody that's gonna listen on all uh, podcast streaming platforms. Make sure that you come on the YouTube and you subscribe to Country Fan Mail Podcast. We out of here. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate no problem, you, bro. Appreciate